Hello, this is Jan Sashin. Today I have the Tranis uh, on my bench to review and I'll show you a nice little uh, ground station with a um, 5.8 GHz diversity receiver and built-in monitor from Globeflight. First we will take a look at the Taranis. Um, I have to admit, when I first uh, heard of the name and the price uh, and Free Sky, I was a bit skeptic and thought it was a, a, cheap, a cheap radio. But um, they really got me when they brought out, uh, when, when uh, Immersion RC brought out their UHF plugin module for the bay. So I uh, just did some research which radios could hold this Immersion RC uh, module and found the JR radios and the Taranis from uh, FreeSky. And as soon as I found out that there are some other good pilots that I trust on the system like uh, you, you sure know Bruce uh, from uh, RC model reviews or Ali Shan Mao already reviewed it. I think also uh, Justin from Australia, Just 70, uh, Jutz 70, also used it in his videos, so it must be good. I asked uh, the new shop in the UK, um, efpv.co.uk, it's everything FPV. Uh, I asked them if they have one on stock, UHF module and the, the receivers and everything and they were really fast in shipping so I was really happy to see that uh, the transmitter which is roughly around $200 uh, don't know exactly, uh, I paid £139 pound, uh, so roughly around, uh, around $200, um, you get really nice radio, which comes in an even more nice box, I like boxes, so on the, on the major brands you, you usually pay nice extra money for uh, a radio box. Let's look what's inside. So we have a really nice fit uh, box. I just did cut out some extra <coughs> some extra space here and not to uh, harm the switches. I have battery battery checker here. I also have my RC Explorer, my little spectrum analyzer, which is nice if you try in a new area where you don't know what what frequencies are used. This is the magic Immersion RC UHF module that plugs into the back of the Taranis. Um, I also have the old battery as a spare here. And I route it. I'm not sure if it's good to bend the antenna, uh, but this, this is not the the standard antenna that comes with the UHF module. This is uh, what Trappy and others recommend to give you even more range out of UHF. The standard antenna for the module is like this one. So the radio itself. I'm sure you had have seen some pictures already. Uh, it comes with sound. Welcome to Toronto's. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't 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 start with the with the issues first, but if you have the antenna like that, the the strong radio uh, interferes with the with the little speaker, so that's just a little noise. If you put it up straight, you hear nothing. Nice little speech output, like for example, if you if you trim, if you trim all the way, maximum trim reached. <laughs> you get speech out. Also on the center. Trim center. 
Let me send it. Yeah, you can have your your countdown uh, in the in the in the stopwatch, and you would have uh, a minute minute reading uh, via speech every every minute or so. Yeah, you have loads of switches, and most of them are three point switches, which is good. Uh, you have a spring-loaded uh, trainer port switch here. Uh, you have sliders on the side. You have two pot potentiometers here. Yeah. You, f you feel the scent point quite good here. Not so good on the sliders on the side. You have to, yeah, you will reach it. The sticks feel good. Uh, really, build-wise, um, I don't find much difference to my Futaba FF10, um, which costs more than double the price. Six minutes. Oh, I activated the my power switch. My stopwatch runs down, and now told me I have six minutes left. I have here the discovery programmed in, um, still with the stopwatch for 7 minutes, that's for smaller batteries. Yeah, and I find it nice to get voice out readings while flying FPV. In the back here we have the module bay. And this is where the easy UHF module plugs in. And as I told you, this was the main reason for me to get this radio. So, uh, Shera is a good system, but I was always bothered that you have an extra box on the back and you might have running cables out or external batteries. Uh, I'm not really good at soldering or, or inventing good solutions, so I always had a possibility for failure here. So I really like the idea that it comes so plug and play these, these days. And oh, it really looks sweet. Um, and what's also nice with this radio is uh, you have an internal 2.4 GHz, which has quite good reputation. So uh, <coughs> FreeSky started making uh, modules and and receivers a few years back. They have good range, as I recall, uh, and they have a very good, uh, very good reputation on a solid uh, 2.4 gigahertz radio. So it was about time that they make their own complete radio. And they did it. So the great thing here is you have an integrated 2.4 gigahertz you can use, uh, and at the same time you can uh, have another module. So on each uh, programmed module, you can um, activate which which radio uh, module should be used, the internal or the, the one in the back. So uh, you could fly 2.4 GHz for normal planes or for short to medium range FPV. And you could uh, just select another model and it would automatically activate the, the long range module in the back, so you don't you no longer have to switch between uh, modules for different planes. I really like this aspect. Uh, aspect. Another really cool aspect of the Turanis uh, or the Free Sky stuff is that their receivers the receivers are really, really cheap. They look like high quality, and they have good reputation. Also, uh, it has. Eight channels, but if you use uh, Futaba's S bus uh, system, you just, as I understand, I didn't try it. Uh, you just plug in one server cable, uh, feeding all the servers, and then you get 16 channels. Or you could also uh, bind two of these receivers uh, to get 16 channels. I guess, like always, something. Uh, it's 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 a diversity system, so you have two antennas, and you would mount them in 90 degree. Uh, V-shape, I guess. So these are nice receivers. 
and uh, they come for 30 or 40 uh, euros. So that's really cheap compared to Futaba or Graupner, other major brands, which, which let you pay for uh, the same stuff like 60, 80 or even 100 euros. Yeah, and the other thing I, I also bought from, uh, uh, from everything FPV is this little long range receiver from Immersion RC. Okay, so this is uh, 433 MHz, uh, so you would have to use longer antennas, like on 2.4 GHz. Uh, I really like these uh, antennas, they are, they are from wire, you can bend them. And you, do, you do not need uh, extra support, they just hold up themselves and they bend away if something is in the way, so uh, quite nice design. Uh, good connection here. Yeah. And again, you would normally give them a 90 degree differential so that a V-shape uh, always gives you a nice radiation pattern or reception. So if the plane banks or the copter, you would always have one antenna with good reception. So to the Tyrannis itself, we power it up again. Welcome to Tyrannis. Um, I really didn't study the, the manual uh, before setting up my uh, first module. model. Um, the first model is the Discovery. I really found it easy to program this radio and that's the, the biggest plus point uh, for this uh, open, open TX software. I uh, didn't uh, flash, uh, flash it or install a newer firmware because it already had a quite new one on it. I also didn't play around with the sound file or something other. But you're really open here, you can um, connect connect the transmitter to the PC or laptop and have a software uh, where you can do the whole model setup on your PC. So this is nice. But I didn't, I really didn't need to. So I just played around for like half an hour and did the, the model setup like I have it on my Futaba and really found it easy to assign switches for like I have here the start, the motor protection switch only if this switch is up, uh, my throttle channel is active. So I have a mixer that reduces the throttle channel to zero if it's down. It also uh, enables the, the stopwatch. Uh, so now the countdown is running down from seven minutes. Uh, and it's stopped if you have the motor switch down. So automatically if you enable the engine, the timer runs down. Yeah, so the programming and mixing was really easy. I really enjoy radios where you have an idea of what to do and you can do it. And the, the power of this software here is that you can be very inventive uh, in what combinations, what procedures you start with switches. You can have voice commands on specific switch positions, so you can be reminded that you're in GPS mode or that you're in uh, normal mode. Mm. So it really gives you a lot uh, to play around with. But this is also a nice feature, the servo reaction page, where you see which, which, sticks, which stick uh, works on which channel, so you can easily set up your model or connect the servo cables corresponding to the stick movement. Yeah, the battery. The battery is one of the downsides, uh, as, as many others also. So, so the battery is one of the downsides, uh, I think. Uh, they supply a, a cheap little 800 milliamp uh, nickel metal hydrate. Uh, go and ask Bruce what he thinks of these batteries. I had to do some modification here. I got this. I trust these uh, Sanyo Anyloop 
battery packs. They have very little self-discharge and they come as, as packs already. Mine came as a pack with these blue plastic parts and I had to remove them so the tight fit of the battery in the module bay was not a problem. I also had to solder on this cable here which is basically a JSTXH uh, two cell balance plug. But other than that this battery modification was quite easy so you just have to uh, buy another battery if you want longer flight times. This is uh, around 2000 milliamps and it's uh, 10 volts so it's more volt. It's eight batteries. You would fly on, on the normal module, you would fly for many hours. I'm not sure how much power the Easy UHF will demand, we'll see that later. Micro SD card in here. It's nice also, it stores the modules, it has the voice files, it has the firmware on it, stuff like that. I have now a good battery solution for the Tyrannis, which is easy to do, but um, for charging I don't want to replace the battery or take the battery out because the cable will wear out and so so there is a uh, charge port here the charge port has an internal charge circuit so you would only supply 12, 12 volts of power here and uh, I guess 500 milliamps and the internal circuitry, uh, circuitry uh, would, would adjust the charging of the original battery. But the original battery has uh, two cells uh, less than my solution, so lower voltage. And it wouldn't really charge the Aniloop pack as I like. If you want to charge in the, in the battery, the, the easy way, which is the charge plug to your normal charger, then you would have to open up the Tyrannis and do some soldering. Uh, I'm not good at soldering uh, small, small parts on, on the circuit boards, but this one was really easy and uh, I'll show you uh, in, a, in a quick, quick uh, video uh, what to solder on. Tyrannis charging port, which is here. It's the external charge plug. Per default, these cables are connected here. So there's an internal charger that is for the standard battery and I don't really like internal charger. So I found a little hint to just route these two cables here. Yeah, you have to extend them. And I found that this one next to D2 is the positive and this here is the negative. So you just solder them on here and you bypass the internal charger which helps you charging the internal battery just with your normal charger. So it was 15 minutes of soldering. It is a bit uh, uncomfortable to have to open uh, a new radio but this really adds a lot if you can charge the battery in the radio itself. Okay, so here I have my TBS Discovery, uh, which I installed the X8R receiver on top here. And this little uh, plastic antenna extensions here, I mounted them like uh, vampire T's here. It's not a good idea to power up the copter with propellers on. We have a green light here, so I did correctly bind the thing. Here you see the standard telem telemetry reading. It shows you the, the voltage and uh, the reception, the RSSI signal. There's one issue you shouldn't be afraid of. If you move close, you get telemetry lost. So the second nice toy I got for 2014 is a brand new ground station. Last year I started 
to fly on 5.8 gigahertz uh, just with the FedShark uh, receiver including the goggles. I did it for the simple reason that I wanted to fly with others and uh, many of them uh, of my friends fly on 2.4 for radio so my video was jammed by that and I had to uh, take another frequency so 5.8 is, is the best compromise um, but when you fly with the goggles receiver you have to stand uh, to get a good reception and uh, you have just one receiver and from my 2.4 experience I knew that the diversity receiver for video can, can help you a lot because you can have one, one directional helix and an, an SPV antenna for an omnidirectional and the diversity chooses the best signal from, from those antennas and this way you can really fly uh, and have nice uh, frequency and, and quality. And the other thing I want to try out is a good uh, monitor because flying with goggles gives you the best immersive feeling but it has some downside also like for example uh, the fogging in the, in the lenses and you're, you're very blocked uh, and don't see what's, uh, what's happening around you. Um, if you want to start by line of sight, you, have you start without goggles, then you start and then you put down the goggles, so that's a bit inconvenient. With the monitor you just uh, can switch from looking to the module uh, to looking to the monitor in a, a second. So, so a monitor is, is great, but the advantage of the goggles is that uh, the sunlight is blocked good, uh, which isn't normally on a monitor, so you have to have a huge sunshade which we have on this module here. It's again like much from my things from Globeflight. Um, the antennas are from uh, Circular Wireless. It can be fed from I guess 2S to 6S batteries, uh, 7 to 28 volt or something like that. Uh, so I can use my 3-cell batteries uh, I soldered on uh, my standard power plug here, so on the field I'm, I'm able to take all the batteries I have with me for powering this setup and it really doesn't need a lot of, of power, so here I have a 5000 milliamp uh, battery but uh, the original battery which will come out soon, which is mounted on the back um, of the monitor, uh, will have 3, three cell and uh, thousand milliamps and will last for a few hours so so um, if I power it up there's a nice globe flight logo this blue LED indicates which uh, antenna is used on the receiver so right now it's this one you see I used the live out from the GoPro and have uh, easy OSD connected here in this mode you can read all the values quite nice. The Im image aspect ratio is, is squeezed down. So if I long press the plus button here, it switches to zoom mode. Now my aspect ratio is good, but as you see uh, most of the readings went away. So this is the concentrated mode where you just see a good image which is nice uh, and if you want to have the readings in flight I go with minus, I go back Yeah, so you have to choose from two nice uh, image qualities and it's really bright and has a great sunshade in the worst case if you have really bright sunlight you can always uh, take uh, a t-shirt or something dark and then throw it over over you and the monitor like uh, in the old photography days so really looking forward to use this monitor so this monitor has uh, a built-in diversity receiver uh, so you can mount two different antennas or you can also mount two helix and point them in different directions that have uh, freedom to go very far in two directions here I have the circular wireless antennas both directional and omnidirectional. 
you just have uh, one one cable here to the to the battery mount the smaller battery here on the back of the monitor and have it really really handy and comfortable so on this side we have an HDMI port uh, you could for example plug in GoPro in here and feel the material on the screen it has four analog outputs here it's uh, receiver 1 and receiver 2 separate if for some reason you want to see just uh, the output of one of the receivers you have a diversity uh, video out so that would go into your goggles if you want to use the built-in receiver from here and you have a standard video in port for uh, analog input from also a GoPro live out or a GoPro cable. Especially the frequency table uh, is useful if you fly with others and, and discuss uh, which channel to use. Um, if you fly with others on the same uh, frequency, on the same band on 5.8, you should take care that each of you is on very uh, far apart channels. Because you will notice if you're on channel 4 and your mate is on channel 3, you will uh, see his video uh, coming through. Uh, because yeah, that's that's the way video works. It's not just a line up on a single frequency. It's it's rather a, a, such a curve. So the neighbor frequencies are blocked or, or obstructed. Also, okay. So that was an update from my hunger. Uh, hope you liked to see the new equipment. Maybe it got you some inspiration. For example, to move to 5.8. Give a monitor a try. Definitely you should take a look at the Tyrannis. Uh, it's a very promising uh, new radio and a really convenient uh, UHF system. If you have any questions uh, that I didn't cover in this video, just uh, put it in the comments. You should also check the description below this video. I usually put loads of infos and links down there. Uh, links to my hangar uh, site, for example, uh, links to uh, my copters and also thanks for watching. If you have not yet subscribed, please do so. Uh, I try to make a video each week and I try to keep it entertaining. Um, yeah, Spread the news, share me on Facebook and on your social media platforms. Uh, thumbs up this video, it helps me. Uh, and. Check back soon. See you next time. Bye.